Welcome to Toffee TV. It is the man of the match show, Everton 2, Bournemouth 3. This could have been such an upbeat man of the match show, and it was for 87 minutes. Uh, I'm still struggling to understand what happened on Saturday. I don't understand how we had one of the most one-sided Premier League games we've seen for a number of years, um, or probably since last year when we played Bournemouth, and how we managed to throw it away, which is uh, incredible, really. But... We're not here to talk about that. That's from the final word. Check that one out. This is the man of the match show where I basically, after the match, I pick the man of the match off my eyes without looking at any numbers or anything to do with the game. Um, statistically, just what I've witnessed. And on Saturday, I picked Illiman and Dai, who I thought was key to everything Everton did on Saturday. He really took the game to Bournemouth, stretched them, Got people off the edge of the seat, you know, on the edge of the seat, got people on the feet. Really caused a nightmare for Bournemouth. And the game, in my opinion, totally changed when the manager took him off. There was other players that were lag, you know, lacking and, and needed to go off at that stage. It wasn't in Jai. And when he went off, the game swung into somehow into Bournemouth's favour. But I give him man of the match and I haven't looked, I didn't look at his numbers, like I say. I have had a look at his numbers since. So let's see whether my eyes were lying to me or whether I was uh, correct in giving Illiman and I the man of the match. So here's a basic overview of his uh, numbers for the weekend. 43 touches, uh, 77 passing accuracy, no goals, no assists, obviously, uh, and five tackles. Good start there. You can see his heat map as well there. Yeah, so that's a decent start for him. These are the shot map of Illiman and I's shots at the weekend. Couple going back across the keeper, the one... In the first half, when the corner dropped to him, which I thought he should have scored. Well, he hit the target, didn't he? But you'd like to think the net was going to bustle from that position. Um, moving on. So here we can see his attacking numbers. Uh, he had two out of three of those shots. We've just seen the shot map, haven't we? Uh, 67% shooting accuracy. There 43 touches, as we've said. Four touches in the opposition box. He completed. I was shocked at this number, I'm not going to lie. It felt like he completed way more dribbles than this, but successful dribbles, one out of four, made three passes into the final third. Accurate crosses, none out of one, accurate long balls. So these numbers aren't really uh, giving me lots of confidence in my eyes after Saturday. Uh, accurate passes, he made uh, 77%. We've done that one, 17 out of 22. No chances created. Expect the XG... 0.26 expected goals on target 0.32 expected assists 0.04 uh, and a 0 0.30 as well there looking at his duels he won six duels lost seven so just under half of his duels uh, no aerial duels didn't go for any was fouled once didn't commit any fouls at all and his defensive numbers one interception five defensive actions and 12 ball recoveries, which was up there with the top numbers for ball recovery. So it just shows you, I, he, the thing what he did for me was when we gave him the ball, he kept hold of the ball and he made Bournemouth players, you know, brought two people over, freed up a lot of... Um, a lot of space for other players on the pitch. When he went off, we lost that. We lost someone who was travelling with the ball and keeping the ball for us and buying us a little bit of time. And we just didn't have that. We lost control of the game. Again, I thought he was Everton's most important player at the weekend. I thought Zira Boonham, who was, has got a couple of my man of the matches, was outstanding for about 75 minutes. And then he, he dropped off. He just looked knackered. Um, whereas in Jai got taken off. I just didn't think he was looking tired at that stage. He was still key to what we were doing, and we had total control at that stage, I think. I do think the manager got that one wrong. Uh, a couple of notable mentions then for other players who I thought played well, and I've had a look, and their numbers have played out as well, that they had good games. So let's have a look at them. So the first one is Dominic Calvert-Lewin, Everton's number nine. Didn't leave on deadline day, despite Chelsea sniffing around him. Uh, he had 36 touches of the ball. You can see his heat map there popping up in other areas as well. Um, passing accuracy, 65%. One goal, one assist, and also made one tackle. I thought Dominic was very good. I thought good number nine played the weekend. Again, I didn't understand why the manager took him off so late when Bournemouth had just scored. We won't keep the ball. Beto, who 
I'm, I've got no issue with Beto, but he doesn't keep the ball the way Dominic Calvert-Lewin does. Yeah. But I thought Dom had a good game and, you know, took his goal really well. We don't see enough of that from him, lifting it over the keepers after coming out, finished it really smartly. And just just a good performance. And now he's here. We know he's here till at least January. Listen, he may well sign a new contract with Everton. He might have looked and his options aren't huge. He may well end up signing a new deal with the football club, who knows. But it was really good play from him at the weekend. We need more of that from him. We need to get him more opportunities as well. But I thought he played well. And on the other men- uh, notable mention who I thought had a really good game was Jack Harrison. Let's have a look at his numbers. Here we go. This Jack's heat map as well. He had 56 touches of the ball, passing accuracy of 89%. Uh, he had two shots, a goal created five chances and tackles one. I thought Harrison had a really good game for us at the weekend. Um just looking on a couple of the the uh op, you know the sites we use with opta stats and stuff. Harrison was Everton's highest rate of player from them, uh, followed by Dominic Calvaloon, but that was always going to be the case given he's got a goal and an assist. So Harrison overall statistically was Everton's man of the match. I give it to him Jai so Statistically, that doesn't back up my eyes. So there you go, one wrong for me. Uh, but I did think Harrison had a really good game, and you know, some people are not sure about him. I think it is frustrating sometimes that he has to check back all the time onto his left foot. But he worked his socks off. Like I say, created five chances there. Everton should have had the game killed well off before Bournemouth even got back into it. That's it then. Let me know what you think in the comments section below. Illiman and Divers, my man of the match. It didn't quite match up statistically. He was still one of Everton's better rated players, however. Uh, let me know who your man of the match was, who you give it to at the weekend. That's if you can be bothered talking about it, because it is quite depressing <laughs> at the moment. I'm sure it'll get better. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching. See you later. <laughs>